Aum Svabodhe Nanya Bodhe Cha Bodharupatayatmanaha Nadipas Yanya Deepe Cha Yatasvatma Prakashane Svabodhe To know itself Na Not Anya Bodha Itcha Need for other knowledge Bodha Rupataya Because its form is knowledge itself Atmanaha One's own Na Not Deepasya For lamp Anya Deepa Itcha Need for another lamp Yata Just as Svaatma Prakashane to see itself. As a lighted lamp does not need another lamp to illuminate it, so Atman, which is consciousness itself, needs no other instrument of knowledge to know itself. Namaste. So this verse talks about the self-knowledge of the Atman, that just like you don't need a lamp to illuminate a lamp that's lit, similarly, the Atman doesn't need any other instrument, any other process of knowledge, or any help to know itself. Svabodha, means self-knowledge. So Atman, because Atman is completely conscious. Now, what does this mean exactly? We've been talking the last couple of episodes about the fact that consciousness requires ignorance or nescience. Why is it that this chakra, where we normally conceive our consciousness as residing, is called the Agnya chakra. Agnya means, I don't know. Nescience, ignorance. So consciousness depends on ignorance because consciousness is Duality, a subject and an object, and then the relationship between them of the perceiver and the perceived, the seer and the seen. So, because there is nothing but self, therefore, this duality is ignorance. So, is Brahman covered by ignorance? Well, yes. The primary Brahman is covered by the secondary Brahman, Maya, which is ignorance personified. So this is the case that every time we have cognition, I read that long quote from Shankaracharya yesterday. Every time we have cognition, that means there's ignorance because there's duality. Actually, there is no such thing as duality. It's just an illusion. It's an illusion that Brahman creates so it can realize itself. Because even though it has self-knowledge, it doesn't have consciousness in its native state. This is such a subtle point, and it's confusing everybody. I can tell, because the comments that have been coming since I've started this topic are just, you know, kind of nonsense and kind of like run-on sentences that say nothing. I had to delete a bunch of them. So if your comment got deleted, you know, it's nothing personal. It's just that you 
threw a bunch of words on the screen that say nothing. This all points to the fact that this point is exceedingly esoteric and deeply misunderstood by most people, which is as it should be because we are covered by ignorance as conscious beings. How is that? Well, just because we're conscious, for one thing, it means we're in duality. And for another thing, even though we're conscious, we most of the time don't even realize it. Like if you stop anybody on the street and you say, hey, are you conscious? Do you exist? I mean, they're going to think you're a nutcase, right? <laughs> but they're all going to answer, yes, I am conscious and I do exist. How do you know? There's nowhere you can go and look up whether you're conscious or not. There's no machine, uh, no mirror that can show you whether you're conscious. Uh, because consciousness is imperceptible, except to the being who is conscious. That's another way of saying consciousness is always subjective and only subjective. And it never becomes an objective thing because it's non-dual. But the being who is conscious is in duality because consciousness has objects. This is so tricky and slippery that most people go right by it without understanding. This is why our language, our ways of life, our customs, etc., even our philosophies and religions, assume that we are conscious without ever stating the fact or explaining it. I think I told one time already, I was in this religious organization called Krishna Consciousness. Huh? But nobody ever explained what consciousness is. Because to do that, they would have to go into the Upanishads, and the Upanishads, of course, teach Brahman. And they were very much afraid of Brahman, because Brahman is non-dual. And these religionists are all dualists. Why? Because they're basically teaching that if you have a certain object of consciousness, you will be saved. You will be able to transfer yourself to higher worlds and like that. And actually, this is true. But it's not liberation. It's not moksha. It's not complete freedom from birth and death. Yes, you can transfer yourself to the lower heaven or even to the higher heaven through bhakti. But even that higher heaven ends when the universe is destroyed. So it's not a permanent state. It is a dualistic so then, again, we have to distinguish between the higher Brahman, the original supreme Brahman, and the subordinate Brahman, lower Brahman, or secondary Brahman, which is Maya, Shakti. And most people don't do this. Most people just say, well, Brahman is Brahman, and it's all one. <laughs> no, not exactly. Because the distinction between the primary and secondary Brahman is the root of consciousness and the fundamental duality at the basis of everything. So even though you don't need any outside instrument, even intellect or mind 
or to speak of the senses, to determine the fact that you exist and that you're conscious. Huh? Just like a lamp does not require another lamp to illuminate it, because the lamp itself is a source of illumination. Or just like we don't need a light to see the sun. The sun is its own light. Similarly, Brahman does not need anything external to be aware of itself. So, this is svabodha. This is self-knowledge. The self-knowledge of Brahman is unconditional, eternal, unchanging, and infinite. So, just like Brahman is infinite, Brahman's knowledge of itself is also infinite, unlimited. There's no boundaries. There's no divisions into I and thou, this and that. There's no duality. So Brahman is a unique being, a unique thing, because it has complete self-knowledge without consciousness, without duality, without subject and object. I wish there was a simple, easy way to explain this, but our language does not contain sufficient terminology to make the subtle distinction between the primary and secondary Brahman. So one has to explain it in these roundabout ways and by using examples such as the lamp and so on just to show that there's a difference between Brahman without qualities, Nirguna Brahman, and Brahman with qualities, Saguna Brahman, or Shiva and Shakti. This is a great metaphor, huh? Shiva and Shakti, the loving couple that are both the absolute. He is the source, and she is the product, the emanation. She is illusion, while he is truth. He is light, and she is darkness. He is knowledge, she is ignorance. Not the kind of ignorance like, duh, I don't know, huh? But the ignorance that creates a duality when there is no duality. This is illusion. Maybe it's better to call illusion than ignorance. Because she is certainly the greatest magician, the greatest artist. She creates the whole universe. She is the whole universe. That's why she's called Shakti. Shakti means power. So she is Shiva's power, and she is his instrument for creating the worlds. But to know himself, Brahman needs no instrument. So the next time we're going to talk about the three kinds of realization when one leaves the body and the three routes that go to the destination in the next life and how the final one actually isn't a route at all, because one goes nowhere. One simply merges and becomes identical with Brahman itself. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>